Hello, I'm Chuck, and welcome to the Delaware Valley Original Music Showcase. Tonight, we continue our mission of helping support original music in the Delaware Valley with our three-step process. Listen, experience, and pass on original music. But we need your help to get the word out. So let's get started. Tonight's band is a dynamic duo in the dork rock category. But they're more than just musicians, they are putting on a show, a theatrical version maybe, some comedy, some serious, but they're always fun. Let's meet Jill and Matt, they are Hot Breakfast here on the Delaware Valley Original Music Showcase. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, my name is Jill, that is Matt over there, and we are a band Wilmington, Delaware, known as Hot Breakfast, and we are Delaware's premier acoustic dork rock power duo. The song you're hearing right now and that we're about to do to you right now is called Kids Today, and it's about those dirty, rotten, lazy, good-for-nothing kids today. What do they do? Nothing. Get a job. Make yourself useful. Ugh. They have no idea how hard we had it when we were growing up. So if you're under 25, this song is about you. If you're over 40, this song is for you. And if you're between 26 and 39, you can just sit comfortably and play with your song. Kids today, am I right? They've never worked a day in their life. They don't know how it feels to dig in their So now you got a taste of their music. When we come back, we'll find out more about them in the interview. Do 
during these difficult times, it's nice to know there are places that are trying to bring you some normalcy and still look out for your health. The Blue Crab Grill is one of those places, and you can enjoy a social distance dining experience or just get curbside pickup. All you have to do is call 302-737-1100 for a reservation or to place an order or bluecrabgrill.com and make your reservation. And remember, we're all in this together. One is not enough to rock. I'm sorry, but it's true. You cannot rock if you're just one. I hate to break it to you. So as a band, we got, uh, our official concert was in 2009 as Hot Breakfast. And but before then, we had been performing together just sort of on and off, just as Jill and Matt, or Matt and Jill, I don't even know what they came first. But we met in 2002 doing a play, of all things, in Wilmington, Delaware. We did um, a production of Jesus Christ Superstar at the Wilmington Drama League. And as soon as we met, we just kind of clicked and we knew that we were just kind of on the same wavelength. And then, do you want to tell them about the cabaret after Cross Eyed Jesus Christ Superstar? Well, one of the, the cast was this very talented group of people, but only a few of them got to kind of be stars and be solos. So we decided after each show, the whole cast would get together and have a little cabaret show where we would, <clears throat> excuse me, where we would perform for each other. And people in the chorus who never got to have their big moment would perform a solo of some kind. And um, Jill and I decided to, hey, why don't we do a song or two together? Which we did. And, um, it just, it just clicked. Yeah. It just turned out, it was like, oh yeah, we want to keep doing this. Yeah, so during the show, we realized we just clicked as friends, and then, um, yeah, at that little cabaret thing at the cast party, we just realized we might have some musical chemistry here, too. And Matt was a, a very accomplished solo artist back then, so um, in the early days of our collaboration, I would just sing on his solo records, and I'd just provide backing vocals, and we did a duet or something. But um, then we just started getting, like, little gigs here and there, just as the two of us doing a lot of his originals, but then also some covers, and then um, we just decided to start taking it more seriously in 2009, and it's been kind of gangbusters ever since, where we've been very lucky, very, very lucky, so, yeah. So how are you supposed to rock? How many do you need to dig a hole in fertile soil? and plant a rockin' seed. Should you be three like Rush, or four like the Pixies, or five like new kids on the block? Come listen, children, close to me you'll see. Yeah, I think we also had a penchant for uh, doing funny songs in so many even as it, there's so many great singer-songwriters around, many of them take themselves very seriously. As you should. <laughs> as you should. But uh, sometimes I feel like humor is uh, underrepresented in a lot of uh, music scenes. So we really thought we could bring something funny, something different. Yeah, something different. Not every song that we do is funny. Like, we don't feel ourselves as a comedy band, but, you know, the songs that, you know, you heard during this session, we tried to pick kind of some of our funnier stuff because we feel like that's a good way to connect with the audience because... You know, I, I just feel like humor is just something that we all just need, especially now. And it's just a way to just bring everybody together. And it doesn't, like, if you're in a live venue, you are sitting in a room full of people who are could be ideologically different or socially different, uh, you know, socioeconomically different, all kinds of different. But if we're all laughing together, we're good. And we're happy to be the butt of that joke, too. You know? oh, yeah. so, so, so it's all good. So we just try to bring people together. It only takes two to run. I was a huge like Abbott and Costello fan. Yeah. Laurel and Hardy, Martin and Lewis. Like I was, I grew up as a little kid. That was my, that was my jam. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. And it definitely informs. You know what I mean? Like if that's the stuff you grow up on, like then that's where you get your sense of comic timing and even just facial expressions, body language. I mean that stuff really does. It, if you enter that world at a young age, it really does kind of get into your DNA and it still kind of sticks even no matter how old you get, I think. 
Back when the world was new, people crawled out of the sand. They looked around and said, we got to start a rockin' band. So they gathered up guitars, keyboards and horns and basses. What a waste, they never knew that the power of two could melt their faces. Oh, 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 whoa! Many places, so we, um... Uh... Both of us will have will occasionally just like get click some little hook or riff or melody or idea of something goofy that we want to sing about and we'll record it and just put like a little tape recorder on our phone. Yeah. Um, and that is the source of many, many of the ideas that develop later into songs. Um, also, Mac keeps a notepad next to his uh, on his nightstand, so sometimes you know you just wake up weary at four in the morning. And you're like. I had this thought, you know, he just kind of scribbles it down, and then the next morning you're like, I don't even know what that says. But, you know, yeah. but sometimes you'll get inspiration just from these random thoughts you have at, you know, two in the morning. And then I'll, um, usually I'll start by writing, you know, coming up with some, some music and saying, hey, Jill, how do you like this? And it's a, I always try to think in terms of, like, chord-based, chunky rock and roll, like the Pinks, um, even like ACDC, the songs that are, like, riffy and old, old-time rock and roll that, that we can jump on. And then um, once I have an idea down, I'll kind of audition it for Jill. And then from there, we're like, yeah, I like this. This part isn't working. How can we shape this into something that is a kind of a coherent hot breakfast song? Yeah. But Matt really does all of the songwriting. And I think the only credit I can take for from the songwriting side of things is I'll help shape it. So just like Matt said, he'll bring me a song that's probably halfway done, maybe. And then he'll kind of, like you said, audition it for me. And then I'll say, well, oh, would this work if we slung this over here? Or sometimes you don't have to touch it all and it's perfect the way it is. I mean, he's such a gifted songwriter that, you know, a lot of times we just, you know, might change the word here and there, but that's it. And otherwise, most of the time it's like perfect the way it comes right out. You write a good song, oh, man. Like, but not always. Sometimes it's what I think is funny isn't translating at all. And I have a background in playwriting, and I understand that from playwriting too, that I think I've got this great thing out and the audience is just, you know, what? So it's really nice to be able to, to have Jill there to be that audience and to help turn these into a, into a good, coherent song. Yeah, see, so it's incoherent, even though our songs are anything but, but still. I'll get right to the point. If you think that you can't tear up the joint, well, you're in for a shock because it only takes to tear a magic formula is with two people and whether they have it or not there, there definitely has to be um similar goals and similar and similar wavelengths not just in musical taste but in our approach to performing i mean i think both of us have this kind of theatrical approach to doing a show yeah and um but we find that just by continuing to work together and especially during this pandemic, we have been focused on doing many shows that are being live streamed. And that's really helped us to keep this chemistry going for sure. Where, you know, we're at the point now where Jill takes a, starts a joke and I'll start ripping on it. And we get this, and we end up in a place where like, hey, that was like a finish line. It's hey. amazing we got there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's a combination of having the same mindset, having the same goals, but constantly working and constantly working together and even just talking or riffing and getting to that point where you, you know, you, you know each other and yeah. you know each other well enough that you can just finish each other's sentences, 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 sentences. totally natural, natural. perfect, killed it. So we also, in addition to being Hot Breakfast, we um, both have a, we've both been studio musicians since our teens, oddly. And we didn't grow up, like I grew up in North Jersey, Matt grew up in Delaware, so like we didn't meet until 2002, but it was odd how similar our young musician backgrounds were, you know, coming up. Like we, I was a choir nerd and a, and a band kid, and, and Matt was a band kid, jazz band kid, and again, in our just parallel lives, we were studio musicians as well. Um, I went to school for music, and so I met a lot of great musicians uh, going to music school. And Chuck, you brought up a really good question where you were asking about chemistry, and I just wanted to mention this just real quick. Um, so because Matt and I have this studio musician background, we get asked to supplement 
other bands a lot. Um, so we're both multi-instrumentalists, so, you know, sometimes we'll jump in as a horn section, or Matt plays saxophone, you know, so he'll, you know, be a sax player for, you know, somebody's band, whatever, so, you know, you have to be flexible. And I really think chemistry, a lot of it is just being open and being kind, and also just kind of being able to read the room, you know? So, you know, when you're walking in as a guest, you know, or as a hired gun into a situation where everybody in the, the core band has been working together for 20 years, you know, you just kind of have to know your place and realize, you know, I'm not the alpha dog here. I'm just going to kind of sit tight and do my job and show up on time and you do your job and you leave. And, but through that, you get good relationships and then you, you can build good chemistry. And then one fateful night, when the planets all aligned, the gods of rock decreed that these two soul must be combined. Then the earth reversed its course, as Matt and Jim, we joined our forces. The moon's eclipse, the seas caught fire. Trust us, dude, we checked our sources. Whoa, oh, 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 whoa. Now here's some good advice. If they say, I bet they're soft. Southwest three years in a row. Um, we've uh, played on stage a zillion times with the Dead Milkmen. Um, you, you know, the people who are our age, you know, you might remember this kind of punk rock girl, you know, from the 80s, and uh, they're still playing. We did a recording project, did a documentary with them. Um, so we've been really, really lucky to just, you know, that, to be able to do what we do. So every time we get a new opportunity, I'm delightfully, I'm delightedly surprised. You know, but I also, I think if you leave yourself open to having good things come to you, they, there's, it's ever so slightly increases the chance of those things coming to you. And I know that sounds kind of woo, but that's where I am. But, well, I, I think that, that as, you, as long as you define success as making the music itself, and, you know, I love being in a recording studio and making a record. And maybe it's a fault of mine, but once it's done, I feel like, hey, we made this record. I'm so proud of it. I love it. And, and I need to be in the mindset of maybe we should get other people to listen to it. But the fact of making it to me is just success. So I've always defined success as if we just get to play together doing one of our daytime live stream shows, that's, that's successful. And if we get to have a gig where we play and people, you know, there's people in the audience who like us that's success and as long as you don't and it's not to say you shouldn't be ambitious of course you should if you want to climb the ladder there's certainly ways to do that and we have done that to an extent but as long as you're happy making the music that you're making no matter whether it's recording or playing with other people or um, just doing our own gigs that's the success i want there really is there's so much joy in just being able to make music that uh that people hear and like and that's I don't say that's all I want, because of course it's great to do that on a bigger scale, um, but it is really what I want. So I, I feel like extremely successful in that, in that way. Okay. So take a number, all you ladies! Go take a ride in our Mercedes! Together at this point, you know, so there's no hiding it anymore right now. Um, 
but sometimes people ask that and then sometimes we'll kind of give like a little coy answer but you know uh, we're, we're a couple yeah but again you don't have to well, how's that dynamic play into making music? You know, you know, it's funny when we first like started dating, which you know wasn't until 2011. Yeah, we were a band before we ever yeah. looked at each other like you know dating possibilities. It was very odd. But that was a but that was a factor. We were like, well, is this, are we still going to be able to practice and are we going to be able to take it seriously and all that? And after a few times, like, yeah, we totally can. Sure. And it's you know we still have that i mean the thing is because we're here together we're constantly hey i have this idea do you want to listen to it yeah um and, and it's I, I i think it's exactly the same dynamic we had before the only difference is and it's um it used to be when we practiced that was what we were doing it's three o'clock someone's coming over to someone else's place we're going to sit down and for two hours we're going to practice or write songs or whatever whereas now that's a little harder to enforce not for any reason except that eh, we'll do it later i want to watch tv or whatever yeah i make dinner so that is something that i think you gotta struggle with of, of saying it is now music time it is focus time practice that's what we're doing for the next hour and it's even harder during lockdown too you know um through this entire pandemic you know you you know that you are going to be home until we don't know when so there's always ah, we can do that tomorrow you know there's yeah. always some of that but um the truth is is i always say like you do what you want to be doing like that like what are you doing right now i'm doing what i want to be doing so if there's a musical thing we need to do if we need to rehearse or something and i'm doing something else i have to think why am i doing this other thing is it because i'd rather be doing this other thing or because would i rather be writing would i rather be working on music and the answer always is I'll put this thing away you, you really actually rather be doing music so i'm like okay come on let's go do music or he'll say come on let's work on music because ultimately that's what makes us both tick. like that is yeah. you know and before everything else we're musicians so you know as much as i want to you know sit and play with my phone <laughs> music comes first yeah <laughs> So you see, my friends, it only takes two to rock. But never before in the history of rock and roll have two people joined forces and rocked, except us. It's an exciting place to be in the what annals of- What about like Hall & Oates? All right, it happened to them, but to Hall & Oates and us, and we're the only two oh, duos- Oh, Sam and Dave? All right, it happened to them as well, but to them, Hall & Oates and us, and that's- Oh, us. the White Stripes, the Black Keys, uh, all, uh, happened to them. The Righteous Brothers, totally happened to those you guys. You are killing me. Wham, featuring George Michael, happened to them. Dude. George Michael is never going to dance again. I've got faith. Oh, Ooh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, it happened to them. It did happen yeah. to them. Yeah. And whatever happened to that Fresh Prince guy? I don't know, he was so cute. I hope he did okay for himself. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the whole purpose of this song is how we're the only two people in the history of rock and roll who formed a rock duo and rocked, and now you just listed five million rock duos so that makes this song moot and awkward even though it's really medieval but there's only one band performing for you right this second on delaware valley's original music showcase and this band happens to be called hot breakfast hot breakfast one two three four whoa, 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 whoa. So now you know it's true. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa. We did the math for you. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa. Whatever you're into. When they tell you only a big brand will do, well, you know it's a crock because it only takes two to rock. It only takes two to rock. Yes, it only takes two. Me 
During these difficult times, it's nice to know there are places that are trying to bring you some normalcy and still look out for your health. The Blue Crab Grill is one of those places, and you can enjoy a social distance dining experience or just get curbside pickup. All you have to do is call 302-737-1100 for a reservation or to place an order or bluecrabgrill.com. <laughs> Under 